but I wasn't meaning it like that. I was meaning it like, keep it simple, stupid. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, you're right. People would love to hear that. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cardia. And I am Lucky. And this here is Frank. You all know him. And today he's wearing his Floyd's Barbershop shirt. Is he a patron or is he the one cutting the hair? I think he took it off of um, somebody. I think so too. (laughs) (laughs) I haven't seen that shirt around, Frank. But today, oh man, guys, it's Wednesday. It is. The first podcast of the week. We mm-hmm. start the week on a Wednesday. You start the week whenever you want. Some people say <laughs> Sunday. Some people say Monday. Oh. We say Wednesday. Right. We do a Wednesday mm-hmm. to Tuesday week. Right. But we're coming off of Holy Week. Yes. It was a Holy Week. Yes. What would we have? We, we started with the meme review, which that was... No, we end on the meme review oh but i feel like the, the that meme review was a holiday Easter. it was no the one before that the one before that was palm sunday palm sun thank yeah. you that's what it, oh. it was a sunday it was a whole week seven days okay that's, Wait, eight, that's days. eight days <laughs> yeah. it was palm sunday right then we had Atheist. wednesday what well no what was the the holy day oh uh uh it was spy wednesday spy wednesday holy thursday holy thursday good, good friday. friday and then we had a Easter. <laughs> we had an Easter meme review to finish us off. Yeah. So we were just jam packed. I mean, yeah. as far as Croak and Crow goes, that's our busiest week. Yeah. That's where we get. In, that's where we get all our revenue. <laughs> it's like, uh, <laughs> yeah, tax season. Yeah. For exactly. An we're like H and R Block and tax season. Right. Um. Did you know that H and R Block shuts down some locations when it's not when tax it's not season? tax season? Yeah, I think I can. Um, I know around tax season, you know how um, Halloween stores pop up. Yeah. In places, yeah. I feel like they do that. Yeah, I was at I was at H and R Block filing my taxes because I am an American citizen who pays my dues. Good. Well, actually, they paid me. Well, I guess I paid them and they paid me back. Yeah. Um, you just played a little game of. I'm just yeah. You hold it and now I'll hold it. Yeah, <laughs> it's like here you go, and it's like you gave us too much. Okay, I'll take it back. The yeah. difference, but. We were talking because I got the um, I got the it's called Rest Easy, um, Rest Easy Insurance. Oh, because I, I mess up my taxes a lot because you would you wouldn't know that I had a business degree, and so it was it was I also got swindled into it. You know the lady was so nice and she was like, well just for this much more. And I was like okay, but she was saying. But you just know you can't come back here if you have a problem because this store will be closed oh, in a couple of weeks. Okay. And so she and that's that's all I was saying. I was just saying. But what is the rest easy plan? If there is any follow up that I need to do, they can help. I you. can go back for free. Like, but just I, go find a different an open H and R block. Just I, I need to contact her who will no longer be at that office. Okay. So that's my um that's my tax plan. What's yours? <laughs> Um. So yeah. So there's all- a de- they re- they moved the deadline back. So yeah. Today's April seventh. It's normally April fifteenth. Sure. And they moved it back to May. I think May seventeenth because of all the unpleasantness that we have been going through. Yeah. People- there's a lot going on. You know. Yeah. The IRS they get a lot of flack, but I kind of feel bad for them. Do I? Yeah, I do. You know what? Jesus said, "Love the tax collector." Yeah, that's true. And so. You know, think about think about it. No, it's they're, true, they're, it's just, true. they're just doing a job, and this year, they are doing a lot more than and they a normally lot new, had to. New rules, with new the rules, unemployment, and everything. Unemployment plus all the people that had to stop working. So it's a big country. It's a big country. Think about your local tax collector and what they go through. They don't want to take your money. They're just doing their job, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, so so this week is a where it's a little bit of a come down from the holiest of weeks, right? But we're still gonna be holy. Yeah, it's it's we're riding high because <clears throat> because Jesus was resurrected, and so now you know we get to be so <clears throat> happy and joyous, happy and joyous. And, um, now that will carry us all the way to Christmas. <laughs> it will. Yeah. Um. Now Lent is over. Have you worn gloves? <laughs> no, I don't even know where they are. <laughs> 
I gave up gloves for Lent. And now we're getting 70 degree days all week. I gave That's okay. I gave up gloves for Lent and um, now I can once again wear them. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it hasn't come up. But I have stopped pushing. You can have my extra change at the cash register. Okay. Because that was the other thing. I did. I, I did. You know, uh, I did one thing and I removed one thing for Lent. Now, Ramadan starts next week. Okay. And they have a month, their month of fasting and um, sacrifice and so forth. Are you celebrating? No, we'll be in Florida. We'll be in Florida. We did our sacrifice for the year. Yeah. But we always sacrifice. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not stopping. I had a very loose Lent. A loose Lent. Before Lent, I was just, I was taking pizza bagels to the face. <laughs> I was drown. I was drowning myself in, you know, 48 ounces of Coke a day. No, you weren't. But we did have a um, New Year's Eve party, a Croak and Crow New Year's Eve party. We had a Croak and Crow Super Bowl party. We did, we did. And so it was party season, and so it, you you it, welcomed Lent. I, w- I, w- I welcomed Lent, and now I'm going to continue to be mindful on a day-to-day. This is bothering me because it's not straight. Today is April 7th. April 7th. And for Catholics, it's um, the feast day of St. John Baptist de La Salle. Is that connection to LaSalle? Yes. LaSalle University? Yes. LaSalle High School? Yes. Both local schools? Both local schools. and To the Philadelphia area. Named um, for this French saint. And today is the day he died. And we talked about that in a previous podcast that, you know, what do you se- when someone dies, do you celebrate their birthday in remembrance or do you celebrate their death day? I would think birthday. I know. But it seems that saints. Well, because was he martyred? Maybe. I, I don't. Feel, I, I don't know anything about him. Okay. I can see with with saints. Right. And the martyred. I mean, we just came through. Right. Good Friday and Easter, yeah. which, you know, we we obviously celebrate both with Jesus. You know, Christmas and these holidays. But I feel like because that is in a spiritual sense when you're talking about a spiritual person, a saint. Right. It's not as much seen as entry into the world. Yeah, it's exactly. Entry into Especially when, when you go right. through a martyrdom, it's like that. Is, like after all of their service, now they are gone off to heaven as a saint. Right. It's, which isn't the same when when you're looking at earthly people who right. you are appreciating, and it's like it was their their life that was important. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about um, talking to my mom, who she passed away in. 90 no 2000 she passed away in um 2001 2001 okay final answer no 2000 i can't remember 2000 2000 was that 9 11 that's no that was 2001 okay i'm gonna say 2000 (laughs) final answer (laughs) alec um and i said to myself oh like i would tell her that regis philbin died (laughs) If she was alive? If, yeah, like if I was able to talk to her right now. Well, no, she's she dead. Kn- so wouldn't she know? Well, that's what... That's what... I think she could have told you first, actually. Exactly. That's what I thought. Like, this was all a fleeting thought. Yeah. And I was like, Regis Philbin. Like, he was a cool guy. And I'm like, oh, like if I was talking to my mom, I'd be like, guess what? Regis Philbin died. And then that quickly, I thought she would be like, yeah, I know. I know. He's right here. <laughs> my mom's with Regis Philbin. I can believe that. Yeah. They're both really friendly people. I could say it. Oh, are friendly people. Okay, anyway. Anyhow. <laughs> yeah. So today is Wednesday, which means only one thing. Christian meme review. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is one word Wednesday. Yes. Our favorite day of Wednesday. Because we're simple people. Well, speak for yourself. I'm complicated. Are you? Well, then we won't see you till Friday. <laughs> Um, no. Today's, t- today's for the simple. I don't think easy. anyone anyone likes being called simple. Oh, really? Uh, I can't... oh, like you're saying simple minded, or just simple, like minimal minimalist. Are there simple people who like the simple things in life? Yeah, I, yes. You're supposed to you're supposed to try to get there. I don't think anyone would want to be labeled as simple. Oh, you're simple. You're so you're so simple. You're so cluttered. No, it's you want to you want to be like. There's a little more to you. But I like, wasn't re- meaning it like that. I was meaning it like, keep it simple, stupid. 
<laughs> yeah, no, you're right. People, people would love to hear that. <laughs> you know, that's that's Kiss. That's from that's from the office. And Dwight is teaching, I think, um, Ryan. And he's like, it's like Michael says, um, <laughs> keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple, stupid. Great advice. Hurts my feelings every time. Meaning, you know, for sales, like don't yeah. make it, don't make it complicated. Yeah. No, that's funny. Okay, one word Wednesday, on Wednesday, April seventh. I'm feeling like it's gonna be something good. Oh, I thought you were saying it. I don't know it. You do know it, and I don't know how to say it in one word. Okay. Um. Hmm. I do know it, guys, and it's not really one word, but wor- okay. I'm gonna say a sentence. Okay. And then I'm going to give you one word. And then okay. that's a word I'm going to put up here so that we can pass it. Okay. You know, like we're, we're trying to like. Oh, right. Like do some Get between loop. the red tape or whatever it's yeah. called. Pass the red tape. Pass the red tape, however you say it. So we're talking about when to keep your mouth shut. And the word is silence. <laughs> okay. And we're not talking about being silent. We're right. Because silent of, is too big of an umbrella. We're not but... talking about vows of silence, but we, right. we need to have a, a title that's one word. Okay. So we're talking about keeping your mouth shut. Right. And the, Immediately when I hear myself say that, it sounds like, like don't be a snitch or like or just just keep your keep your mouth no shut. okay so um well I know no that's what I, I I know what I'm thinking about when I'm saying I'm saying I know no fresh ears that's I what know. I hear when it's like all right just keep your mouth shut well one of the terms is hold your tongue hold your tongue okay and I said to myself hold your tongue I think that's what I meant to say. It's fine. Over keeping your mouth shut. Oh, <laughs> maybe that's why I was like, "That's not harsh." Yeah, no, it's hold your tongue. Hold your tongue. Yeah, self restraint. And so I looked it up, and um, I wanted it to be this. It came from this place, but it was one of those things that doesn't really seem like they know where it came from. Because at first it said that Chaucer, Chaucer was who was a very famous English poet. It, you you had to have read Canterbury Tales yes. in high school. Um, that's Chaucer. That he said it, but then the more I looked into it it's like a viking saying um at the very it says something like at the very least like if if you don't want to be a fool if you can hold your tongue then you're not a complete fool like basically and so i'm not really sure now about if it was chaucer but um he did write in in 1387 thee is better hold thy tongue still than for to speak but um this particular from thesaurus.com goes on to like talk about like what, like you just held your tongue with your teeth like what does hold mean and they said it's actually just a term and the other time you would hear hold your tongue or hold your quiet you know hold your peace is at a wedding when they say who is unhappy with this union speak now or forever hold your peace or forever hold your tongue. Forever hold your tongue. So it's it's saying the same thing. Yeah. And so therefore, yeah, it's not it's not exactly silence or you know, um, it's more of you you have something that does need to be said, maybe. Yeah. But or you want to say now's not the time, or now, yeah. or it's not really necessary. You know. Yeah. No, it's an important thing to talk about, especially nowadays, because you know what? And I mean, I sometimes. I might be a little opinionated. No, I might be. I am opinionated. And there are times when I know. But we have an opinion show. So that's. We have an opinion show. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> you have to. Well, yeah, but I'm saying in, in the world, like with my opinions, I know there's some places, some instances where I am better. Not even like saying better off holding my tongue mm-hmm. is like sounds like the road less traveled uh-huh. but it's almost more like it's the right thing in some situations to hold yes, your tongue yes and we're talking about when is the right things because then some people would say well when i know i'm right i need to say it right and it's like you're not you don't always need it like sometimes being right and saying it or what or, makes you wrong <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> saying, saying the thing that you know is right makes you wrong right now i want to because the, the, what I'm about to say sort of just poses still the generalized thing before mm-hmm. we actually dive into the little details of, of what is what should be said and what shall should be held back. Okay. In an earlier podcast, I think it was last Friday's podcast, I brought up the serenity prayer. Right. Is it a prayer? Okay, so... It is a prayer. Okay. I was like, wait, is it a poem? No. And then I just remembered. I think it's like a German prayer. Okay. Mm-hmm. The serenity prayer. 
And I sort of brought it out of context just because right. I, it got jogged into my memory. But I think this applies to holding your tongue. Yeah. Now, well, last time we said it, we misquoted it. We did. So do we know the exact thing or would you like me to look it up? You'd have to look it up. Okay, I'll do that. I get one phone privilege a day? <laughs> yeah. Maybe we should just get a laptop. Start carrying um, a laptop on set. Well, while you're looking it up, I'll tell you something about Job. Job is the beleaguered Bible person who... Yes, poor Job. Poor Job. He A lot of bad stuff happened to him and he was upset and he... He was very verbal about it. And so that way we get to understand what was happening at that time. But there is a verse and it's Job 16, 6. And he said, yet if I speak, my pain is not relieved. And if I refrain, it does not go away. And I thought that was a good example of like Mm. people feeling like they have to say something. But it has happened to me many times that I felt compelled to say something. Yeah. I didn't feel any better once no. I said it because it made new problems. You, you find that online as well a lot. Yeah. Like we talked about in the when you just see is there some ignorance being spewed somewhere and then you just turn into it's go mode. Like, yeah. I, like I know this is wrong. And then you and then you don't feel any better. Nobody's mind was changed. No. In the, and you just sort of brought yourself into that. Yeah. Okay. I have the serenity prayer. Okay. So it goes like this. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Now, I think that is is nail on the head with the hold your tongue because that's sort of what we're talking about. It it is when is it, when are you contributing positively, like to say the things? Right. Or when... Like, uh, I, I forget. You're stirring right? up trouble. Yeah, when, when you're stirring up trouble. Right. Like, like, and serenity is just another word for peace. Peace. Yeah. And when we, we, we talk, didn't we have like a little little play on words with peace? We, the power of peace. Uh, the power of patience. The power of patience is peace. Is peace. Okay. Yeah, but. But that's like, true. That's, that's true. That applies to right now. Yeah. Um, what, you ever like have something like ready to go and then it's just like that it's, patience. And it's like. It's not the right time or it's not the right person. Yeah. And and there is there and that's what it brings like when when what Job said what you said that feeling that you said it, it's still not good right. after the fact right it's because you think oh I have the right thing to say I'm going to bring peace back to this right but sometimes saying things isn't going to no. bring that peace because it's not solving anything right so that's a serenity prayer they use it in AA a lot um, and it's it's sort of uh, What's this word? Surrendering. Yeah. Your yourself to a higher power. Right. And it's there. There. Why? Why do people say that? Because before I really looked into what that meant, it was like surrender. I never surrender. Right. I'll never see the white white right. flag. But what it means when it's like surrender yourself, it's sort of this. Accept that you cannot change everything. Like even if you're the smartest person on the world, if you know everything, that's. You're, yeah, like when, um, it's like driving. Mm-hmm. You can be the best driver. You should not get lackadaisical at the wheel because everyone around you is not the best driver. And so you should be driving like everyone around you is the worst driver right, ever. Right, right, right. And that's how you are a better driver, not by knowing you're good. Right. And so with the, the surrendering yourself, it's like it doesn't matter how much you know. That's not going to change other people's minds. Right. That's not going to do any of this stuff. And it's that peace that it's just like, Okay, I understand that there, there's a, there's, I'm going to have serenity rather than, and then also I'm the courage to change what I can. It's not saying always, always hold your tongue. Well, of course. And that's, that's the conundrum. That's, that's the decision you have to make. Yep. Is this the, t- is this the time? And, and, you know, we're saying hold our, hold your tongue but it would also be hold your fingers you know from yeah. if you if it was about yeah. um commenting online but yeah so it is a little tricky but it is tricky and back to the serenity prayer we could have done this on one word wednesday or we could have done a walk through thursday because i'm liking this prayer for this topic because that's where the end is it, it's part of this prayer when you're when you're asking it's not give me the serenity to oh, accept right. the things i cannot change and the courage to change the things I can, and I'll know what to do. Yeah, and it's like, okay, you're done, and now you'll now you'll know what steps to take at the end. It's and the wisdom to know the difference, right? It's like admitting, it's it's a it's not black and white. It's, right. it's a gray line, and part of what you're asking for is 
because there are times when you're like, no, like I, I need to say this. I and know. it's like what you what you're asking for is like the wisdom to know when to hold your tongue. Right. The wisdom to know when it's right for you to speak up on something. Right. Yeah. There's another thing that goes along with it, I think, and it's when somebody says something mean spirited. Yeah. And then they say, Well, it's true. Yeah. Um that is not the point. Mm-hmm. If it's not time, you know, hold your tongue. Yeah. Whether it was true or not, if you, you just, it's just sometimes you're just making things worse. Yeah. By, or, or not even if it's, it doesn't have to be even so dramatic as making things worse. It's like, if it's making it about you. Yeah. And it's not supposed yeah. to be about that's you. A, that's or, a big one. Yeah. Like hold, you know. a lot of the times is like, you might get caught, caught up in that where if someone's going through something and you try to be like. In your mind, it might be a best of tensions. Right. It's like, let me be relatable and, and stuff. And it's like, that point, that person just needs to vent about their problems. Like, I know. That's another um, tricky one. So, and, and and I've been running into this. As a matter of fact, I was just talking to my sister the other day and I said to her, oh no, like, am I doing that? And it was, when someone's talking about, you're having a conversation with somebody and then they'll say like, they went down the shore and then you'll say... Like, oh, I went down the shore too. And, and that's how you have social interaction and you yeah. have, you find common ground and you're having this conversation. But then, and, and I just saw something online that said that if someone is telling you something, don't feel necessary Obligated. to match them mm-hmm. with what they're saying because it takes away from what they're saying. So when, like I said, I was talking to my sister and then I was like, I kind of, lo- all of a sudden I lost the line and I'm like, am I... Yeah, you know everything you're saying. Am I go? And she's like, no, that's different. That's when you you one up them. So if you say yeah. like, I burnt my foot, I'll be like, oh, well, I burnt my whole body. Yeah. I don't know. That's uh, very I, crazy. I want I want to scratch off. It's like, oh, we just won a car in in a right. raffle, and it's like, okay, well, I won ten dollars, but I was right. excited until you just said that. But also, even if it was equal, maybe you you would still hold your tongue because just let them have that for yeah. a minute. Yeah. So say you won the ticket, and I also won a ticket, but yeah. I, I just never know. Well, the wisdom to know the difference. I mean, I mean like, <laughs> n- nothing in this life is black and white. Right. A- and so, the problem with it is, is it's such a gray area. Right. Especially when it comes to interaction and, and speak in your mind. Right. And and so, I think one of the most important... Hey, let's talk about prayer for a second. I think one of the most important things to pray for, more than earthly things Mm -hmm. more than anything is wisdom okay just always ask for wisdom because it's twofold one you're granted wisdom if your prayers are answered you know but two i think there's such an importance of always if you have a day what is an affirmation or something yeah when it's like or like a daily thing of ask for wisdom ask for wisdom i feel like it's more on your mind to To find it to be find it Mm -hmm. and to never feel like you're the wisest person. Like, if you're always asking, um, it's it's like you're hustling. If if you're hustling for money, right? The the richest person is usually the one who's never sat. At, like, right? You you see businessmen and, and men and, and they're hustling harder, and it's like, well, the grind doesn't stop, right? It, it's the people that are like, ah, this is enough, and it's the same thing with wisdom. If you're right. always if you're always acting as though you're broke in the wisdom department, yes, and, and it's like listen there's more wisdom more wisdom more wisdom and i think it's much more beneficial than money is wisdom of course money and wisdom immediately i think of the story of solomon do you know the story of solomon i know he was smart i mean he was the smartest guy so solomon david's son david king god's favor um and so solomon was raised up to be king right and god or a message asked him and said you are David's son. You are part of that lineage. Uh, what do you want? And he said, I'm, I might be butchering this, but this is, this is yeah. gen- generally what it is. He was like, I don't need a, I don't need king, uh, kingly stuff. I don't need money. All I want is wisdom. And then God said to him, because you asked for wisdom over jewels and money and fame, I'm going to give you wisdom. And I'm also going to give you the king crown oh, wow. and the jewels and the money and the fame. Awesome. And then, then that's when he became the right. the smartest man right. and the the Pharisee 
came over and asked him a question and he knew it all that but he, he got it both and, right. and, and i i always think i always push the idea of always that's what you, that's what you want because especially i think you know i always say we're only here to love i, I think wisdom is part it's wisdom yeah. and lo- love and wisdom that's Bernath and the college I went to. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny. A lot of the things that we come to revelations mm-hmm. on, their guy. Well, Swedenborg was was a great um thinker. Yeah, and yeah. you know, and a theologue. And definitely, he had ideas that were good. When you even when you say with wisdom came the riches, you know, uh, the saying of if give a man a fish or teach the man how to fish. Yeah, you know. The wisdom part would be the you learned how to fish and then you can yeah. you can get all the fish you want. You don't have to depend on somebody giving you a fish. But we're talking about holding your tongue. So I want to say a PSA. PSA. And the PSA. PSSA. <laughs> is that a test? A standardized yeah, yeah. test. Is it? I might be only Pennsylvania. Oh, uh, maybe Pennsylvania standardized, standardized subs- yeah. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. assessment. They might have stopped them. They had so many, so much trouble. I with those love tests. standardized Did tests. You? Like, I I understand because I've asked for wisdom and I think I've gotten enough. So I know when things work for me, I know it doesn't mean it works for the majority. Right. That was the problem. But, yeah, and it, it was unfair because there were people who right. were excelling in strictly standardized tests and people who weren't. And it was like, well, that, that person's smart. That person's not. And right. it's like that person's brain works the way a standardized right. test is work. But mine did because like, I I was good in school. Um, with just like the 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 very rudimentary in the box mm-hmm. standardized test formats, and so I used to love it because like I maybe it didn't push myself in every aspect, and it was like a standardized test is coming up. It's like yeah, oh, kick your feet up. It was it was your it was wheelhouse. my it was my yeah it was in my wheelhouse. Um, th- this PSA for holding your tongue is for when you get stopped by the police. Don't hold your tongue. 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 Please. And if God forbid you get taken in, hold your tongue. Don't talk. Plead the fifth. Okay. Um, You know that. Why are you making um frowny face? It, it just seems like something you need to talk about more than like, hey, quick interjection. Don't talk. Don't, don't talk to the cops. Don't talk to the cops. There's so many TikToks of lawyers who tell you that you make your you make admit you make it very hard for a lawyer to help you Mm -hmm. if you have spoken and um law enforcement is trained on making you feel super comfortable and this is all off the record and you you know or or one thing that they'll they'll do is they'll act like they're making your life easier yes like listen this is no big deal all i gotta do know you did it are you gonna tell me you did it you know yeah and once you do that then it's going to go easier on you do not so hold your tongue. Don't be disrespectful and don't get yourself in more trouble by not following directions. Mm. So if they say, what's your name? This is my name. But only answer what they asked in a, you know, in a, in a very identifying way. Yeah. But do not elaborate because, like I said, um, I don't know how much they do it, and I, I I don't know how much they do it anymore. But you've I've seen things where false uh, confessions or just they could have been helped by a lawyer, but they they, they just offered too much in, in their panic or their fear. And um, so hold your tongue, say what say what you say, and um, if, even even when even if you think well I don't have a lawyer or I can't um, I will be getting no counsel. You will you get a lawyer. Everybody in America gets a lawyer. Just wait for that lawyer yeah. that they will assign you and they will help you to say what you have to say. And it's stressful when you get pulled over. And yeah. the, the biggest thing to remember is when, if things do go further, you can always come back from a denial. You right. can never come back from a um, admission of, right. of guilt. Right. Well, I mean, not never, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that, harder. It's harder. That's yeah. what I'm saying. You make it harder for um, your your legal team. And um, yeah, so it is 29 um i wasn't good there's a lot of proverbs uh, and proverbs are great for for wisdom things of you know because you know who wrote proverbs david solomon oh solomon really 
So I, I don't know about all of them. I said once that David wrote all the Psalms. Turns out he you didn't really write. were offended by that because I thought he wrote every single. But one. that's okay. He wrote the majority of them. He wrote the majority. Yeah, so, I guess I just wasn't wise enough to know. So just the only thing that I'll bring up um, regarding the Bible and holding your tongue is when the the high priests in Matthew twenty six the high priests had Jesus before them and they said people are saying that you're walking around saying you're the Messiah you know uh are you and he remained silent so it doesn't say he held his tongue but he remained silent and be like jesus and don't feel that you have to gab away <clears throat> yeah i don't know i did i feel like we, did, did we really say when to hold your tongue and when not to i feel like we just said there's times when you should and there's times well, when i said you it was tricky and that and you said well you have to pray for wisdom to know the difference <laughs> well there is something i wish i could remember it right now and it talks about it's it's to teach you not to in not to get involved online mm -hmm. um with with other people and it's it's something like is it kind do you, do you want me to look it up it's is it kind is it necessary uh, let me look it up quick sure. and, and that would be a good thought for you to say um when to help hold your tongue unless you have another idea well um I think just in general, it's important to remember that not everyone's going to believe the same things as you or do the same things as you. And I think it comes down to a piece. Mm -hmm. And we talk about this all the time. And you, and you have to, a part of the wisdom is asking yourself, is this going to bring me peace to say this? Right. Is this going to bring the other person peace? Right. And I think a lot of the times when it is, it is good to get involved is if, it's going to bring you the opposite of peace if someone's not like if uh if it's hurting someone else right if something's going on that uh, that's affecting people or even yourself like tr you play chess so yeah. I found that <clears throat> I found the uh, it's allergy season and I'm like appalled that I'm clearing my throat on the mic and I'm I need to drink more water I found what I found the um, guideline for not getting into scuffles on the internet okay. and it is before you post or speak say to yourself is it kind is it necessary is it helpful hmm. and if you can say yes then go ahead we'll just stop right there i, I was <laughs> i was i was waiting for an answer to end this podcast oh, okay like, i feel like we didn't end it with an answer and we always got the answers yeah and let me just let's just end it off with that guys yeah. so we talked about sometimes it's good to hold your tongue sometimes it's good to speak and then you asked me and you you said, "What? Well, when? Please just like give us some wisdom. Yeah, yeah. I've been praying for wisdom and now I'm watching you guys. I want to hear it. Well, people have, have given us the answer. When asking, should I hold my tongue in this situation? Right. Ask yourself this. Is it true what I'm about to say? Is it kind what I'm about to say? Is it necessary? That's a big one. Is yeah. it necessary? Exactly. Yeah, well, because remember I just said things can be true mm -hmm. and it's still not. Yeah. So you uh, you you run through those three things in your head. I think you'll always be pretty isn't safe. There, isn't one more? I think I missed one and then you missed one. Isn't it? Is it helpful? What is it? True, kind, necessary, and helpful. There's some of them have hel helpful. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, one one of them even has inspiring. Okay. But, so yeah, so so run through that checklist and, and you'll be good to go. And just remember that sometimes it's good to talk. Sometimes it's good to hold your tongue. But hey, you have to decide for yourself. Yeah, it's like playing poker. Sometimes. It's like playing poker. You gotta know when to hold them. Know when, when to fold them. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Tomorrow is Walkthrough Thursday. We hope to see you there. Like, subscribe, and Share. I would say share, but maybe you should hold your tongue. Maybe this is just a nuts thing. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Run through the thing. See if sharing it right. is the right thing. Is uh, it helpful? Well, yeah. Is it kind? Yes. Yeah. Is it true? We spit only facts here in the Crooked <laughs> Podcast. Till tomorrow, guys. Peace. <laughs>